Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody that watched the last video that I did. It was amazing. I loved the idea that I was able to do a video. I hope I do more of them. I really enjoyed it. Um, my name is Natasha. The name of the ministry is Care of Future, where we talk about stopping abortion, making abortion no longer an option. So, thank you for those who watched it, shared it, and commented on it. And if you have not yet watched it, you need to go and check it out. It's really powerful just to be able to um, hear her tell her story. You know, um, it's a nice young lady. Her name is Mary, and she talked about um, how she did not abort her baby once she heard the, um, the heartbeat. And I just wanted to piggyback off of that video because and it just really showed me how important it is to talk to people and educate people and help women, you know, who are going through these struggles. And like I had mentioned in one of my videos, this is a community effort, you know, because a lot of people don't realize the stress associated with an unplanned pregnancy, especially if you're not in the best relationship. You know, if you're having trouble with your mate and what have you. So, um, yeah, the best part about the interview is when she talked about she kept the baby. You know, that when she had that sonogram, the doctor said, let's give you a checkup and um, do the sonogram that um, she realized the baby was alive, which is something else a lot of people don't realize, you know conception brings the life that means when that baby is in the womb it's alive a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people think we have time because it's not a baby yet yes it is you know so that's why i even did the series the other day when we were talking about seeds how important seeds are and people fail to realize that that seed is life you know and that's going to grow into uh, already what it is which is a baby so um yeah that that was amazing to me so i feel like you know we really need to work on how to best um educate young people and even um women who are going through it how do we help comfort them how do we help you know bring them to a place of peace so that they're not so afraid because it's in that state of being afraid that they run off to go do an abortion and then later on they're like what did i do you know but if we can help them through videos or you know being at pregnancy centers to let them know that you know we have you know we can help them um another thing i wanted to point out that really struck for me was the faithfulness of god you know, God is so faithful. God is so faithful. God is so faithful. You know, he sent the one lady in the clinic to tell her, I'll help you with your baby. Then the doctor, you know, the doctor who waited and said, let's do the, the um, let's do the, the checkup. Let's do the, you know, the checkup before you have um, an abortion. All of those spoke to the faithfulness of God, even the dream. God gave her a dream that she might die and the baby would live, you know, and it just shows how, you know, the word says the Lord cares about everything that concerns you. And he knew that this baby was going to be an amazing blessing to her. And as distraught as she was at the time, he wanted to give her various confirmations to not abort her baby. And I mean, this is the God that we serve. This is the God who loves us with an everlasting love. He wants the very best of us for us. And it greatly grieves him when a baby is aborted because he has said it time and time again, the baby was created by him for him. The baby has a destiny. The baby has a purpose. You know, the baby has a life. That, that it's going to benefit God because God has a purpose for that baby to come on this earth, you know. So I love that she 
when she heard that heartbeat, that was the loud confirmation she needed. And she got off that table and said, do not abort my baby. And that's where we need to get to a point of letting women know ahead of time, your baby is alive. You know, the baby has a heartbeat. The baby is alive. The baby has a destiny. You know what I mean? And I feel like the more we say it, the more they'll understand it, the more they'll wait and pause, even, you know, in the time of fear. But wait, what am I doing? You know, so I just really wanted to come on to quickly thank you for watching the video. You know, if you haven't watched it, go ahead and check it out. And if you did see it, share it with other people because a lot of people need to hear her testimony. A lot of people need to know that the baby was alive. The baby is alive in your womb. And that, um, it's so funny. I was thinking about something else. You know, with them who did um, the ban, they have the, the um, abortion ban up to, I think it's like six weeks. Once you hear the heartbeat, then you, if you do abort your baby, it's illegal. That is an amazing law. I mean, we want to ban abortions all the way completely. But in a case like that, that'll help women keep their babies. So, you know, it's nice to see that this law is in place. We would like to get to a place where there's no abortions, but it's totally illegal. And I believe it is going to get to that point. But for now, they need to do sonograms before every abortion and let everybody know that the baby is alive and give the woman a chance to make a decision based on the knowledge. Because a lot of times, you see how this young lady said she didn't know. She was like, what is that? Not realizing the baby was alive in her belly. You know, so that should be like a requirement. You know, as we are on our way of not having any more abortions, that they should always have a sonogram beforehand. And um, just trust in God. Just trust in God. And we're going to continue praying and we're going to keep standing with those that are praying, you know, for abortions to be a thing of the past. But um, those are things that really stood out to me that are things that we have to continue working on in terms of educating, educating, educating young ladies, you know, letting them know how valuable they are, how beautiful they are, even to not get to a point of having an unplanned pregnancy, let alone how to prevent it. You know, just don't do it, you know. Go back to living pure and holy, which is what the Lord is calling for our, our, our everybody, not even just our kids, but for every one of us, you know, to go back to the basics, go back to living holy and pure lives where you keep yourself until you're married. That is possible. It's beautiful. That's what the Lord wants for us. And the sooner we go back to living the way he wants us to live, the better we'll be. <laughs> the better off we'll be. Because look at how we've made our own decisions, doing our own thing, and we have been running amok. This society is just out of control. Now we need to go back to the basics. And the basics is living the way the Lord says for us to live. No fornication, you know, no sex outside of marriage, no sin, no sin, you know, lying, cursing, just recognizing what sin is and really making it a conscious effort to live the way he wants us to live. And then when we do that, we won't have to worry about abortion. We don't have to worry about unplanned pregnancies. We don't have to worry about women's hearts being broken because, you know, the guy wanted to do his own thing. You know, we just make choices, better choices. So like I said, I didn't want to stay on long. I just wanted to piggyback off of the interview that I did do. And thank you for watching it. And um, you'll be hearing again from me. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. You know, if God gives me breath, I'll definitely let me forward with the things that he has given me to do. So God bless you. Let's save babies. Let's help the Lord save babies. Let's help people better understand and educate them on um, that the babies are gifts from God and God wants them to be allowed to live. Okay, so God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye.